Welcome back to another exciting episode of Feltboard Theater. We'll be in the book of Acts chapter 21 today. Acts chapter 21, near the end of the chapter. If you'll look with me at chapter 21, verse 17, we see that Paul, the Apostle Paul, on his missionary journey, has come to Jerusalem. Now, if you remember from the past episodes, a lot of people were saying, Paul, if you go to Jerusalem, something bad might happen. But we see Paul trusting in God and going to Jerusalem anyway. When he arrives in Jerusalem, the first thing that Paul does is purifies himself because he knows that he's going to have to go to the temple. The temple is where the Jews would be. It's where they would meet to worship God. And he knew that's where his audience was going to be. He had to tell the Jews about his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Paul goes to the temple, and when he's there, the Jews from Asia saw him. These were the same guys. Do you remember? These are the same guys that Paul has been having problems with since the beginning. And look what they're doing again. They are stirring up trouble against Paul. They're trying to turn the people against him, the Bible says. They would yell out, This is the man who teaches against the law. And they would just make up all these false things about him and, and lie. So what they did was they all decided to get together a group of, you know, unhappy people. We'll put it that way. And they charged into the temple. And the Bible tells us that they grabbed Paul and they dragged him. Come on, Paul. Let's go. Come on, Paul. And they dragged him outside, out of the temple. Come on. This, you're coming with us, pal. Come on. You're coming. Hey, hey, leave me alone. You're coming with us, Paul. Let's go. Come on. No more trouble. Come on. And so they dragged him out of the temple they beat Paul and just treated him terribly for only trying to tell the truth. We're not going to show you that here, boys and girls, because we are a family program. But you word got out about what was happening. And the local uh, Roman guy in charge, the, the, the leader, hears about all these people fighting and the uproar that's going on in town. And so he dispatches a whole bunch of guards... Guards marching, guards marching down to stop the fight. And look, uh, okay, boys and girls, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I only have one felt board guy of a soldier, all right? So um, I'm having to be a little creative here. You're going to see one on the felt board, but you got to use your imagination. There was a bunch of soldiers, but I only have the one. So uh, we're going to pretend like this guy represents a whole bunch of soldiers all right so just use your imagination with me all right here he goes hey what's going on here what's what's going on and thankfully boys and girls there was a soldier here with the roman magistrate get out of the way come on back it up break up knock it off to stop the fight and prevent paul from being further beaten but the sad thing is because he thinks that paul is the cause of all this trouble and remember he wasn't he takes Paul. Come on, buddy. Stand up. Stand up. But he didn't do anything. He was just trying to preach the truth. It doesn't matter. You're under arrest. You're coming with us. And they take Paul and they put him in chains. Look at that. Come on. Get on there. And they put him in chains. I don't have a fancy group of uh, soldiers, but I got chains. Yeah. The Bible tells us that the guard marches Paul to the local, it uses the word castle, but he's talking about a prison. And he's taking him to, to lock him up. And the whole time that they're walking, wouldn't you know, that same crowd just continues to yell and scream, away with him! Away with him! They wanted him to go to jail. They were just, they wouldn't even leave poor Paul alone. The whole time, they're yelling and screaming, take him away! That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Can you guys think of anybody else in the Bible where this kind of thing might have happened where an innocent man was imprisoned and the crowd was angry and yelling and oh, you remember that yeah maybe anybody anybody that's right jesus christ it's pretty cool that paul gets to identify with jesus christ by going through a lot of the same experiences that he did so if you're following along in your bible you'll see that 
there was a man named Claudius Lysias. Now he was the he was the guy in charge, okay? We saw him a second ago. He's the guy in charge. He comes down to Paul. He was the captain. He thought that Paul was an Egyptian who had been giving the Romans a lot of trouble. But when Paul spoke to him in Greek and told him that he was a citizen of Tarsus, the captain began to listen to him with more respect. And the captain, you know, he's like, I had to buy my citizenship. And Paul responds, he says, well, listen, I was born a Roman in Tarsus. And that right there meant that Paul was a Roman citizen. And the captain pretty much realized that, you know what, I probably should not have locked him up and put him in chains. And you know what, I really shouldn't have arrested him. And Paul, instead of, you know, pushing the issue and saying that he's going to get his attorneys and sue, you know, the Roman government for false imprisonment and all that stuff, he instead says, hey, may I speak to these people? And he's talking about all the people that have been following him and saying, you know, throw him away in jail, don't lock him, lock him up and throw away the key and don't let him free. Oh, so he's like, can I turn around and talk to them? Can I preach to them for a little while? And in verse 40, it says, and when he had given him license, in other words, when he said, yeah, you can go ahead and preach, Paul. Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people. So he's calling out to them. He's like, come here, come here, come listen to what I have to say. And when there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue. So he begins to speak to them in the Hebrew tongue. Now, these were a bunch of, of Jewish people who were saying that Paul was nothing more than um, a bad man who was trying to, you know, destroy the Jewish traditions. And, and um, you know, he was going to be like a false teacher against the, the God of the Hebrews. And, and that wasn't true. Those are all lies. And when Paul began to speak to them in their own language, in Hebrew, they immediately recognized that he was a man of authority, that he wasn't just some, you know, crazy person saying crazy things, that he was actually someone who knew what he was talking about. And the Bible tells us, as we continue on in chapter 22, that Paul then preaches his own testimony. Now, boys and girls, what's a testimony? A testimony was his personal experience uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you'll remember, way back in uh, the early lessons that we've done, you'll remember in the early life of Paul, we talked about that experience that Paul had when he met Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. And he begins off his speech, and I'm going to paraphrase, you can follow along in the Bible if you like, but he says, Brothers and fathers, I, I, I am a Jew born in Tarsus, but brought up here studying under the teacher Gamaliel. I persecuted the Christians, thinking I was doing God's will. He says, I journeyed to Damascus to capture the Christians there and bring them back to Jerusalem to be punished. He says, as I made my journey and came near Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? I answered, who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus of Nazareth whom you are persecuting. The men who were with me saw the light, Paul says, but they didn't hear the voice that spoke to me. What shall I do, Lord? I asked. And the Lord said, Arise and go to Damascus, and there you'll be told what to do. I had to be led by the hand into Damascus, Paul says. A man named Ananias came to me and said, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And in that very hour I could see him, he said. The God of our fathers has appointed you to know his will and to see Jesus and to hear him speak. You will be a witness for him to all men of what you have seen and heard. Now, why wait? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. After I returned to Jerusalem and while I was praying in the temple, the Lord said to me, Hurry, leave Jerusalem, for they will not listen to you here. And I said, Lord... They know that I, impr I uh, imprisoned and beat them and, and believed in you, and that when Stephen was killed, I stood by and held the cloaks of the men who killed him. But the Lord said, Go, for I will send you far away from here to preach to the Gentiles. And the word Gentiles, at that word, when he says that word, these Jews just lost it. They just got so angry. Ah, what did he just say? Did he just say Gentiles? What? I can't believe he just said that. 
What? Why? Why? See, Gentiles are those who are not Jews. And the Jews thought that God would never send Paul to preach to the Gentiles. And so they got mad and they started to yell, Away with such a fellow from the earth! You know what that means. They wanted to kill him. He's not fit to live! And they were so angry that they threw off their cloaks and threw dust into the air. Just like, I'm just, just so mad. And they refused to listen to Paul, much less believe in what he had to say. Well, what happens next? Tune in next Sunday to find out what happens to our hero Paul. Is he arrested? Is he thrown into jail forever and ever? Is he set free? How will Lord, the Lord bless Paul? Well, you need to be here next Sunday morning to find out on another exciting episode of Feltboard Theater. Don't forget, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock on this channel, we're going to start our virtual vacation Bible school. Tomorrow night, 7 p.m., right here on this channel, you're going to see the very first episode of our uh, Monday through Friday Vacation Bible School. i got lots of prizes I want to give away. Hopefully you'll be here. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great day.